Hey everybody, welcome to NeuroPsyQ. Thanks for joining us this week again for another episode, and if you're a new visitor, welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to be discussing emotions and some of their neural correlates in the brain. Particularly, we're going to look at the famous PAPE circuit. On top of that, we're going to investigate a question proposed by the neuroscientist PAPE himself, and that is whether emotion is just a magic product or if it's a physiological process produced by anatomical mechanisms in the brain. So sit tight and let's get to it. From ancient times, people have been wondering what it is that makes the human experience. From the times of the ancient Greek philosophers all the way to modern day, we continue to ponder about what it is that makes us feel and act the way we do. And one thing that has been mind-boggling for everyone is the human experience of emotion. In fact, Dr. James Papes was also intrigued by this. He wondered where emotion comes from and if there was something in our brain responsible for the way we feel. In his 1937 paper, he took research from across the field of neuroscience and he amalgamated all of that information to propose his own mediolimbic circuit, which he said was responsible for emotional response. The way he went about proposing this circuit was first of all, by looking at the theories of emotion. Now, Pape's actually moved away from the older James Lang theory of emotion and towards the newer, more promising Cannon Barr theory of emotion. Now, we have talked about these theories of emotions in other lectures, but just to refresh, the James Lang theory of emotion is the theory that, first of all, there's a stimulus. So maybe all of a sudden a bear appears in the room. <laughs> stimulus will cause a physiological response. So my heart starts pounding. That physiological response causes me to feel afraid. So this theory suggests that emotion is reflexive. Whereas the cannon bar theory of emotion says that, okay, that bear's in the room. At the same time that I see the bear, I feel fear and my heart starts racing. Suggesting that it's a simultaneous process that is activated by some sort of central mediator in the brain. In his search for that area of the brain that mediates emotion, James noted that the thalamus is a region where every sensory input from the body passes through, except for olfaction. So senses like vision, hearing, and somatosensation all end up passing through the thalamus and then being relayed to higher cortical regions. With that, Papes suggested that perhaps the thalamus is relaying to the cortex and the rest of the body simultaneously, causing a simultaneous reaction in the way suggested by the cannon bar theory of emotion. In fact, from other studies, Papes actually noted that the ventral thalamus receives information from all sensory modalities, and then it sends this information to the dorsal thalamus, which ends up being responsible for motor output. It also sends information to the lateral cerebral cortex. It sends information to the mammillary bodies. And this was what Papes suggested was the area responsible for emotion. So what he suggested in his paper is that the hippocampus connects via the fornix to the hypothalamus and the mammillary bodies. This region, he said, was responsible for emotional expression. The hypothalamus and the mammillary bodies then attach via the mammalothalamic tract to the thalamus, specifically the anterior thalamus. He proposed this region because the anterior thalamus was shown to be responsible for spontaneous laughing and crying when there was a lesion in it. After that, he said that the anterior thalamus connects via the thalamosingulate fibers to the cingulate gyrus, which is responsible for emotional experience. The cingulate gyrus then connects via the cingulum to the hippocampus. He suggested the hippocampus is responsible for organizing the response to a stimulus, while the mammillary bodies and hypothalamus were responsible for emotional expression. This was the circuit he suggested, and he didn't actually coin it the PAPES circuit. It wasn't until 1952 when McLean wrote a paper on the circuit 
that they coined it the Papes circuit. Now Maclean took Papes' original circuit and added to it the amygdala, the orbital frontal cortex, and parts of the basal ganglia. This is what has become widely known as the limbic system. Interestingly enough, we owe a lot of what we know about the orbital frontal cortex to one case study on a man named Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage sustained an injury to his frontal cortex and after the injury, his emotions seemed to change and this was noted in the people around him. The amygdala was added to the mix after various animal studies suggested that this does play a role in emotion. For instance, Kluver-Busi monkeys, which had bilateral removal of the temporal lobes, were shown to be docile. They didn't exhibit a fear response anymore, and when snakes were introduced into their cage, they actually approached the snake. But another study in particular showed that when surgery was performed in cats, separating different parts of the brain, there was different responses. So for instance, when the cortex was separated from the rest of the brain just above the amygdala, the cats showed savage behavior. And depending on where the transaction was performed, there was different responses in emotion. From this, it was assumed that the amygdala must perform some sort of mediating role in the emotional response. And perhaps the cortex needs to interact with the amygdala to inhibit its reaction. Now finally, you're probably wondering, how did Papes decide to include the hippocampus and the mammillary bodies in his circuit? Well, actually, the hippocampus is affected by the rabies virus. And in animals and humans suffering from this virus, there's different emotional responses such as apprehensiveness, anxiety, and rage and terror. As far as the mammillary bodies go, these have seen to play an important role in Korsakoff's psychosis and Wernicke's syndrome. Korsakoff's psychosis is a type of early onset dementia in response to alcoholism. So there's a lot of emotional changes that happen with that. And Wernicke's syndrome is a less severe version of this. All in all, Papes was able to suggest a circuit that has upheld many of the tests of science today. And he did this just by reading other people's papers, looking at other studies, and knowing the anatomy of the brain. Even though we've taken his circuit and modified it and added more to it, creating the limbic system that we know today, it was a great starting point to take off from. Papes finished off his paper by writing, Emotion is such an important function that its mechanism, whatever it is, should be placed on an anatomical basis. And believe it or not, the anatomical basis that he proposed himself has actually withstood the tests of time and imaging studies, particularly fMRI studies, have revealed that the areas he suggested are actually correlated with emotional responses. At the end of the day, emotions are complicated, and we all know that from personal experiences. With that being said, regardless of the complexity, associations have been drawn between regions of the brain and certain emotions, and this has been consistent from the time when Papes proposed his circuit all the way up to modern day with our fMRI imaging associations. So it's pretty clear that emotions do have an area in our brain. Just as Pape said, for something to be so important, it must have some sort of physical substrate in the body. And that is in our brain. I'll leave you with that for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching.